And that's not that's not flat Earth. Flat Earth is very open, very uh, accommodating. And I mean, if you watch the documentary on Netflix, that that part the part of the conference was very authentic. People were right. in the lobby. We couldn't get people to freaking sit down in the seats because mm -hmm. they were so excited to be in the lobby with other people just chatting it up. And that's what it is. I mean, we don't even have to, none of our meetups are formal in any way. We don't do presentations or anything like that. People are just thrilled to be there with other people talking about this. Uh, I mm -hmm. ran into um, a girl first time she had, she'd been listening to the show for a while. First time, uh, I think she was 30. She drove in by herself and was just so excited to be around. It's like, wow, it is real. A lot of people do that. Mm. We get people that show up at meetups that don't even get out of their car. They, you know, they look from a distance. It's like, you know, they, they can't <laughs> believe it for themselves. They're like, oh. you know, they, they're still right. too shy though. I mean, I get people on my, my radio show that they've listened for years and they call in, you know, finally after like three years because they're just they're just so nervous you know, yeah they, tentative to start right yeah so yeah that's um, that's the reason that's why it's it's just keeps growing and getting bigger and bigger people's like oh flat earth isn't a thing i go it absolutely is yeah a it's thing. probably the most it's a very welcoming community too right it's yeah people are yeah we, yeah we don't too, judge yeah. it's exactly. it's not like it's not like a universal church but because we all have the same common enemy which is the the globe which okay. isn't a person so we don't mm -hmm. hate anyone we don't hate the scientists that preach the globe stuff. We don't hate the PhDs, but we do. And in fact, we disagree on so many different points about the flat earth. But it, again, I, you, I mean, I equated it in the, in the movie to, you know, the, the clans of the Scottish Highlands. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll tear each other apart. But at the end of the day, we all hate the English. Yeah, you have a common enemy. We have a common enemy. And when you have yeah. that, that's a very, very strong thing. And it unites people. So, so um, within, from what I gather, within the flat Earth, there's kind of two different camps. Yep. Um, majority believe that there's a dome. Yep. And there's some believe that there isn't a dome, right? Right. Um, and then it seemed like what I gathered from your uh, um, research or whatever, you you come to the conclusion that it was created from like sort of a higher power. So, do you kind of see this as a religion? Like, does it have a religious connotation? Oh, yeah. We use religious verbiage all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'm really surprised that after, because I've been doing this now for six years, that, and I, I wear the old ones six years, you know, <laughs> six years is like cat years in flat earth. It, it, right. So many things happen um, with the exception of last year, which was just a freaking bust. But we still had meetups last year. You know, only we could do that. We had a full blown conference last year. Mm -hmm. No man. <laughs> how about that <laughs> um but yeah we use religious verbiage because we I mean, why wouldn't you you know there's a mm -hmm. lot of uh you know we talk about people who um are awakened people who believe there's a lot of the word faith is thrown around um and because of that i'm surprised that we weren't painted as a cult I'm really i'm really mm -hmm. stunned you know we did the conference thing no not once and it's, i think it's mostly because it's there's no formal aspect to it um I, heck i even used the monty python religious comparison sketch in the documentary to show us mm -hmm. like you know the, it felt it felt like a lot a lot like a religion but there's we have we have no flat earth official bible uh my books withstanding uh we we have no robes there's no chanting we have no compound there's nothing like that to, to really nail it down to a cult. It's very ethereal in a, in a way. I mean, yeah, you could talk about flat earth, but there's, again, if there was a compound somewhere in the middle of Texas, oh yeah, there might be a difference. You know, <laughs> right, if everyone was living in the same communal quarters. Exactly, and wearing right. the same, you know, moo-moos. You know, people, people would, the media would really, really jump on that. In fact, the mm -hmm. media has jumped on different aspects. The, the most probably glaring, which wasn't in the documentary, which was later, was the uh, the guy that built his own rocket Bad you know mike. we have Mad mike which right, was right. the flat earth on the side and people mm -hmm. don't don't understand and he was supposed to be in the documentary and okay. the producers were like yeah but what happens if he crashes <laughs> yeah and and <laughs> the thing was he he wasn't into flat earth he came to us looking for money he's okay. like he's like hey i i you know would you mind give you know what do i what do i have to do if you give me eight thousand dollars to uh, finish my rocket and, uh, and we said, oh, how about a giant flat earth sticker we'll put on the side? We'll even pay for it. And, and 
that was all the media needed and they were just descending on it. but he didn't know anything mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't know anything so right because i would have when you saw that story you saw flat earther mike yeah. hughes flat tries earther. to prove the earth is flat by exactly exactly and he got so much attention and mm-hmm. uh and the irony <laughs> was that the science channel where the was the one that signed him up for a tv deal they helped build that last rocket which indeed failed (laughs) and crashed and he is no longer with us Mm -hmm. so and and the show was never going to they they quietly swept that under the rug and and no one will ever know that so yeah by the way the science channel is probably the most responsible for for that whole fiasco Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so we, we don't get labeled as a cult, but yes, a lot of religious symbolism, uh, you know, believers, non-believers, uh, and that, that energy is by the way around us as well. We know when it, when a non-believer is in, you know, comes into our groups, you can, you mm-hmm. can feel it and, right. and you, you get kind of that weird, you could turn that into a little TV show where it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, wait, something's not one of us. There's one not among one, us. Not one of us. <laughs> yeah, there's an imposter. You know, yeah. Anyway. Um, so I, I watched, uh, obviously I went through your uh, um, Flat Earth Clues videos that you post on YouTube. Um, yeah. One that I found particularly interesting was the creative force clue. Um, oh, yeah. And you talked about, um, I guess it seemed like there was a people before us, right? And, right. and then there's us now, this divided, um, not in unison group of people who just can't, there's conflict. Right. What this group of people before us who built um, this superstructure, is this just a belief or is there an evidence I, that they built something to get to the dome? Well, I, if, if you didn't already pick up on this, you know, this was meant for that, that particular clue was meant for the religious. And right. That story is lifted straight out of the Tower of Babel. Okay. Uh, you know, from the Old Testament, which is, you know, it's it's a very it's a very very short section in the Bible, mm. but and I expanded on it. You know, I, I I stretched it as far as I could, which basically said that there was one of the early versions of humanity was built, and they were damn near perfect. You know, damn near, you know, all, unified. There was no, mm-hmm. you know, there were no, was no segregation of anything. And because of that, they had a unified goal. Imagine humanity, like we have a unified goal against the globe, you know, our community. But imagine if everybody was on the same page for everything. <clears throat> Human progress just ramps up to an unbelievable level. Mm-hmm. And what they, what they figured out was, <clears throat> excuse me, if you believe in the, in the Bible story, is that they knew where they were. They knew full well the the structure that they were in, you know, that they lived in a building. And so the, it's like, hey, why don't we build basically a building that is also a bridge and and see if we can link up to heaven? You know, they considered okay. themselves godlike in, in that regards. And the story concludes with God looking down. And it's like, oh, damn, they're going to make it. <laughs> they're gonna, <laughs> they're, they're actually going to make it up here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we can't have that. Tear it down. Well, well, mm-hmm. the clever the clever way of tearing it down was you segregated them. You created okay. the multiple languages, which is actually a fairly elegant way of doing it. Which is that mm-hmm. way you don't have to just smush the place. You can um, you can say, okay, you're Italian. But, you know, I'm just making up languages. Yeah, Italian, create Spanish, divide Chinese, amongst French. the people. Yeah, you're not. No one's going to know anything, and they just dispersed. Mm-hmm. And then and then you scatter the you know the temple around, and that that. So went the beginning of one of the terraforming, you know, the the evolution of our world, you know, where it's like, okay, the, because again, I, I always believe that, that God, you know, keeps improving, you know, to, you know, improving on the work or, or whoever, if you want to call it an older civilization, either way, because let's put it this way, if, if, if that being was truly all powerful, probably would have seen that coming and didn't and it's like uh well well <laughs> what's next on the drawing board and so but it but it was a i, I love the story because it, it showed what the potential of what could be done uh, mm-hmm. but i get it uh the diversity is something that i i followed up with years later uh, i've always thought about this I, I i wrote a paper back in the 90s called a static world theory which is that we that the entire universe well let's just call it where we are runs on novelty uh meaning what's new it is one of those things that you know when you're walking up to somebody it's, it's like hey man what's new what's up 
You know, mm-hmm. we, we're always looking for what's new. Human beings hate being bored. Boredom will kill you eventually uh, because if there's nothing left to do. You know, we all have done that. We, you know, we, we shows are canceled because they run their course. Every right. everything you can think of. There's only so many books you can write. And I think it's the same. You know, I think from the micro level to the macro level, it's also that way. You know, God doesn't want to build or whoever it is, if you don't want to say God, you can say something else. Uh, you don't want to build a boring civilization, right? You want, you want the, um, to, I mean, it's the whole premise behind the original uh, Sim City, which was Sim City was really just an editor. You know, the whole point was to build this city up and then introduce conflict into it and then rebuild the city. And you just mm-hmm. did that over and over. That was the premise until it turned into the Sims, which is a whole another thing. <laughs> whole other thing. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, short short version of that is that it was lifted from the Tower of Babel story, a very overlooked story that pastors don't talk about, which was oh yeah. By the way, back in the day, we used to be really really good at this and mm-hmm. too good to where God is like okay let's make slow this whole thing down and and fragment it and make it more diverse and more diverse and more diverse and if they're going to come together it's not going to be an easy road right okay there you go because it no you know everyone wants we talk in movies and television and books there's a character arc the every great story comes in three acts you introduce the characters you give them a challenge of some sort it's a massive challenge and you then either resolve those challenges resolved in one way or the other either they pass or they fail and either way lessons are learned that's the story and that first story that was like no there was no character arc it was like it's like a straight up line <laughs> literally it's like it's like everybody it's like hey everybody we're gonna make a bridge everyone's on to, board a bridge to heaven <laughs> It's like everyone's hooray! It's like <laughs> it was a it was a short lived uh, project. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. All right. Anyway. Um. So my next point. Um. Basically, y- y- it's a big task, right? This. Oh, hang on. It's Siri popping up. Um. This this whole flat Earth. Uh. Proving it is it's it's a really big task that you have yeah. on your hand. Yep, um, yep, yep. And basically, by by defeat or um dismissing it it's it's a lot of science that backs it up and the institutions that back up science that have gone back thousands of years to to pythagoras and times like sure. that sure, um, sure, sure. so by being pro flat earth would you say that you're against science or would you say that you're against the institutions that reinforce science oh boy this the latter the second one uh, i am not against science we are taught i lo- look i i grew up a, a geek a nerd mm-hmm. a dork you know i i love all things science i've got comic book i used to go in a comic book shop and i was in tech support for 20 years high level tech support and i taught proprietary software mm-hmm. uh that is what i did i loved everything about science uh i used to cover my maps or cover my uh, walls with world maps i used to collect antique globes uh, I loved everything that came out, and I was old enough to, to to be there when all the cool toys came out, way before the internet. You know, every year there was something cool that was coming out. It's like, wow, the future actually might happen. Where's the flying cars? Um, where it falls short is just being human, meaning science. Look, there's conspiracies in every aspect of our lives. It, you know, it, whether or not they're media sanctioned we all know but the ones that are media sanctioned we've seen them you know it's in business and politics and sports and uh entertainment and yes even journalism and science uh real quick the um science their big flaw they have two big flaws one is they will take the money and cut corners for to release a product too early they always have they always will uh everything going back from lead paint (laughs) Lead gasoline, uh, DDT, <laughs> all the variations of DDT, uh, asbestos, which I think is a fantastic product, unless you work in the factory, then you're a goner. Um, <laughs> then, of course, all the scientists that took the money and said that smoking was absolutely fine. <laughs> all the doctors that recommend all the doctors cigarettes, and-, and that has never gone away. It, you know, in mm-hmm. the United States, I, and I think it's everywhere. The FDA, it is the only product in our country which you are not required to um, list the ingredients 
on the anywhere on the side of the pack on the side of the carton you are it is an industry secret they are never going to tell you because they mm. make so much money they can bribe everybody to say like we don't have to say it just take the freaking money and they do Mm -hmm. um the other thing that science has a pro I, I have a problem with science you know when you know, they they formed their basically their own religion you know they started out as we're anti-religious you know we are men of science the scientific method you know we we collect facts, facts of the earth yeah we create we create these books but then they realized pretty quickly on that people will believe them regardless so what happened was, uh, there's a great quote by George Orwell, which I put in the description box of every video I make. And he was talking about how it's so weird that people just believe science, no matter what. If you have a lab coat, you can make statements, you know, and if you get a degree on your wall, you can make statements and people are like, well, he's smarter than me. It must be true. <laughs> right. And he was saying, and this is in 1946, he said, um, you know, you could go to anyone on the street and ask them how they know the world's a globe. And their first response would be like, what are you talking about? We know it's, it's, we know it's a globe. We, it is known. It is a globe. Mm -hmm. And then you say, really? How do you know? And then all of a sudden it starts dawning on people. It's like, wait a minute. It's not that I know. I was told. There's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. And it, the point was, and he was not a flat earther. He just happened to use that as an example. Uh, the, the question was, well, you know, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody know in the 40s that it was a globe? They didn't. They were just told this generation after generation after generation. And then it leads into the problem of science, which is, okay, when you keep making these statements and then all of a sudden you are proven wrong, what happens? Well, you know, with science, um, did I ever give you the, the, or have you ever seen me do the coelacanth reference? uh no i don't believe so. all right let me see if i can go into is there a chat button here yeah good. um I'll, yeah I'll, you... I'll, I'll dump it into chat real fast you'll like this and my video hopefully won't skip out too fast okay so there's a picture i uploaded to you right now uh it's the coelacanth fish prehistoric fish extinct for 70 million years every scientist in the world would have bet the freaking farm on this one right every one of them would have said oh yeah that can you see it yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. every every everyone was said that fish. There it is. There's the fossil. It's an ugly fish with a whole bunch of extra fins. No, it's dead. Super dead. 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 Well, then the British government finds this in 1938 off of the coast of South Africa, and then they find uh, one off of Madagascar, Mo Mozambique. It's they're basically all over freaking Africa. Mm -hmm. and then National Geographic comes out and they end up swimming with them right there. Did special on them. Well, what do you do if you're science? And there's plenty more pictures out there. I mean, there are in videos and all this. You can, you can see this damn fish. They had to reevaluate and say, well, it's instead of just saying, hey, we were wrong, <laughs> they never Which... apologize. Science apologizes for nothing. That is one of my big things. So they just put it under the umbrella of science. Like, well, it's obviously a, a living fossil. It was in an evolutionary state of stasis, which means it didn't change, didn't evolve like all the other fish. It just, it just, and so it's state like, a, what's your point? For, yeah. yeah. What my point is, is that science is wrong. They usually run, the easiest ones to point out is science is wrong about animals constantly. The giant panda was an absolute myth. It's like, nope, doesn't exist. And then you find one, it's like, it's under science now. <laughs> it's, now <laughs> it's now just, it's just here, it's with the rest of them. Uh, giant anaconda, the giant squid, all, all these things were, were absolute myths. And until we, you know, we found them, and but until that point, the thing that pisses me off is they will mock you. You know, this last like giant panda. <laughs> it's like, what? Are you? You're an idiot, right? They will just berate you. And then mm -hmm. finally, you bring one in on a leash <laughs> and they're and like, you have to believe you. Yeah. And then, uh, well, that's not, not just that. It's like, huh, well, then, yeah, put it in the zoo with the rest of them. Like, do you get an apology? Nope. You do not. And so, mm -hmm. what my point is, is like, let's look at stuff in the future. People say, um, there is no Loch Ness monster right? One of my favorites. It's like, what's the Loch Ness Monster? For those of you who don't know, it's, are there plesiosaurs, you know, dinosaurs, old dinosaurs swimming around some of the lakes in the UK? And your answer would be, well, no, why not? Well, because they've been extinct for at least a hundred million years. Oh, you mean like that fish right there, that fish. 
so that fish is totally alive and you were totally wrong on that but the Loch Ness monster no that's totally dead mm -hmm. you realize where the disconnect is right? and and so yeah that's my that's my beef with science do I hate science no um, the the people though that have have commandeered science over the last five centuries have have turned it into scientism they turn it into mm -hmm. their own religion and uh here, i'll give you one more real fast which is here here's my summing up for science that's neil degrasse tyson and that's his quote the good thing about science is that, is that it's true whether or not you believe in it it's mm -hmm. one of the most arrogant things i've ever heard and i know what he was getting at <laughs> he was basically saying that science is science is but that's not the quote he should be using the quote i put out there was science is true until the day it's not right so again, you, you do the same thing. So la last part on science. Um, science will tell you that the core of the earth, and you watch the clues, the core of the earth is, is you know, this molten spinning thing. It's 4,000 miles down. It's like, really? Well, how, how far down have you gone to check this out? 2,000 mm -hmm. miles? 1,000? 100? 10? You've gone down 8 miles or 12 kilometers. That's the deepest hole ever drilled. Mm -hmm. what the heck are you showing me with these cross sections of the earth and and the, and in fact you can look at them on wiki wiki they're, they're, they will say in wiki in the fine print it's like yeah we have no idea what's down there it's like then why don't you put a big question mark in the center it's because right. we, okay. we don't do question marks we don't put question marks on anything we say this is what it is they don't even say we think this is what it is this is what it is and until you're proven wrong there you go <laughs> it's basically that it's being stated as fact rather than uh, yes that yeah they state it as yeah. absolute fact because they know they want to reassure the public you know the mm -hmm. science enhances its credibility by saying that everything is an absolute fact because we say it is when in truth it's like look we studied a lot of stuff it's our best guess and you're just gonna have to take it as that but they're not going to mm -hmm. say that because it doesn't sound concrete enough so but they blend they mix that stuff in with everything else you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level yeah great i can test that in a flame a pot a temperature thing i can test that right now core of the earth no no there, there's nothing you can do there's there's nothing and of course you know then they then they again they span from that which is why they'll say um oh yeah by the way here's what the core of mars looks like and venus and jupiter it's like what are you talking about? You can't even do ours. What are you, what are you talking about? These other things. Right. The, there's a great line from uh, Nikola Tesla. You know, what his story was, who knows? I don't even know if he was from here. <laughs> the guy was way out there. He invented some weird, weird stuff. Um, he, uh, he said that um, what happens is, is that scientists will base their work on the previous guy and will never look at the foundation they will only go on the shoulders of the guy directly below him. He goes, the problem is, is when you keep doing that, you're exponentially getting less and less right to where he goes, he goes, when you get up to a certain level, uh, it, the equations are meaningless. He mm -hmm. goes, he goes, every scientist should be looking at the foundation. And granted, it takes a lot longer, but they should be looking at the ground foundation first. So when people come at me and say, well, you're, are you saying you're smarter than Stephen Hawking and Einstein? It's like, no. No, but if they built their equations on a faulty foundation, they're still wrong. I'm not saying they're, look, they're, they're heavy math and, and you know they know a lot of stuff. Sure, but it doesn't mean they can't be wrong. And they based their, their methods on principles that were flawed to begin with. Right. Um, so you did a, a, a National Geographic segment. I just I, It was a quick video on YouTube that I saw yep. Um, yep. Down in where you had LA. a... In LA, right. And there was a, a test done um, similar to the, the first flat earth test done like in the 1800s where they send a boat out to the water uh -huh. lines and as it goes over the proposed yep. curvature of the earth, the lines disappear. Right. Um, you want me to explain I, that I believe one? in that video you said that that doesn't prove anything for you that there's other factors at play right there's oh let me start up with this one okay right so, so i just my question would be is there any form of proof that would make you think the other way like is there anything that you would be able to see that would make you think well maybe the earth is oh yeah yeah there's two things two two okay. things that could be done um the the first one would be um the camera test and it would be you just take any sort of camera 4k 8k whatever they got nowadays put it on the side of a rocket that's going to leave orbit anybody's rocket point it down 
Don't point it off the side. Don't point it up. Don't turn. Don't don't put it on a capsule that's going to drop off mm-hmm. and go back to Earth, which is what they always do. Put it on the on the top capsule, point it down, and let that baby leave orbit. And as it's leaving, and don't hit pause. You know, just let this the film run. And as it's leaving, you should see the the ground slowly morph into this ball, and then it would leave. It's never happened in the history of space travel, which mm-hmm. is astounding considering statistically speaking it, it shouldn't it, that it should have happened by now that and of course no astronaut has ever done a 360 <laughs> with the camera running but and the the mo- the latest one would have been the tesla roadster in space that's a great example uh, you know that convertible that red convertible in space it had three hd cameras perfect transmission uh the thing was freaking flawless and it, remember it was supposed to go into mars mm-hmm. so just before it's gonna head off into orbit uh, they, they, well, that's it. Turn the cameras off, roll credits. It's like, wh- why would you do that? You have perfect, why? why not let it run? It's like, oh, the, the battery's running out. It's like, what are you talking about? It's hooked up to this giant capsule. Of course the battery's not running out. Mm-hmm. And they, they never, I mean, there's so many problems with that thing. I, I, I could spend a, an hour just on that, but it's never happened. And not only that, it was the, the greatest, uh, um, example of misdirection I've ever seen. A lot of people, when you, if you watch that, and all um, our, our entire community watched it right off the bat, which was they were full, they were just f- following the boosters. So the boosters drop off. It's like, oh, we're going to reland the boosters. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And they land them right next to each other, which we never would have done, but you would have done in a movie because you need you know production value. And it's like a, the boosters are coming down, 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 and the boosters landing and cut to car. And it's like there it is. All of a sudden, there's the car flowing in front of the earth it's like wait how did it get there we, mm. where, where's the shot where's the shots you've got three cameras on this thing why you're just saying that's it there's no the thing that we're missing was the giant forget the boosters was this giant falcon heavy rocket the falcon heavy rocket that detached and put the car there the falcon heavy should have been in the background tumbling off into the background back into earth nobody nobody talked about it no, no, it never showed. It's like, why? Because it's expensive. It, you know, it's like, that's a whole other layer of CGI that you've got to do. And they mm-hmm. didn't want to risk it. So it's like, you know, hold it like, you know, holding the rattle in front of the baby. It's like, look at the rattle, look at the rattle. Here's the, <laughs> and there's the car. It's like, and it took a tail. It took me an hour. It's like, right. wait, what am I missing here? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I see what you did. Very, very clever. That and of course, you know the the card, which made no sense if you believe in the vacuum of space and the heating, the great heating and cooling temperatures. Everything should have been destroyed. You know, the, the, remember it was taken supposedly from from um, Elon's garage, right? It wasn't mm-hmm. a special car. The tires would have exploded. The fiberglass would have been shredded. The the windshields would have spider webbed. The side windshields would have fragmented and broken off right away. Every pressurized system would have detonated in that thing it would have been a, it would have been a mess and by the way you know the, the part that really got me was you can watch the footage if we want you know what's miss, mi- missing from from that car there's no logos anywhere oh really yeah okay tesla i have to take a look and, at the video but yeah and tesla and spacex no that thing should have been nascar it should have mm-hmm. been wall wall stickers right <laughs> there was no endorsements on that car even the mannequin didn't have a, a, a anything on him it was like, it was, they were like testing social media. It's like, okay, is it working? And social media was to say, it's like hashtag not buying it, hashtag fake. We were, we were all over it. Mm-hmm. But the, um, I mean, think about this, right? An endorsement opportunity, right? Uh, it was a four, in fact, why were you using the convertible? Why not use the S series? You know, the, their, their flagship car, the one they're actually selling. Right. Uh, you know, it's a four seater, you know, you could have you loaded it up. I mean, hell, Disney alone could have paid for that thing. Because you have a Stormtrooper in one, Boba Fett, um, <laughs> Groot, and Iron Man. We could put them all in there. The thing right. would have paid for itself. But no, you had a mannequin with not a single logo on him. Just a generic mannequin that didn't look like anything. And that was mm-hmm. it. Nobody else sent a car to space. And that was never turned into a car commercial. It wasn't in their dealerships. Nothing. It was like it, it was it was a it was a fad for like like a week or two, and yeah. maybe a month month of buzz. But again, I've never looked deeply into it because it didn't last that long after. Yeah, what, where's where's the car commercials? And why didn't any other car? You you would think that like Chevy and Ford and and GM and they they would have been watching this. Like, oh yeah, we got to get a freaking truck up there. You know, <laughs> we we gotta we gotta do this. We can turn this in. It's like nope, nobody. Not only did they not do it, nobody even attempted it. Uh, anyway, what else? You um, got? so you mentioned. Uh, this is just a quick one, but you did, you mentioned other planets. Um, so I, I don't, I looked, I'm not sure if I saw anything, but 
in the flat earth model, are the other planets real? Are they, nope. um, they're nope. just, are they made? They're, up they're, they're, to, they're no, they're no different the than lights on the ceiling in a planetarium. Right. Uh, okay. which I say is like, look, do you see Jupiter? You know, you go to a planetarium and you say, do you see Jupiter? Yes, I do. Do you see the moons mm-hmm. of Jupiter? Yes, I do. Can you land on it? No, I can't. Why not? Well, because it's just lights on a ceiling. However, think about it from another way. I've been, I've been working on a new angle for that one, which is if you brought someone even from, doesn't even have to be a caveman, from just a couple hundred years ago, bring them into that planetarium. They are going to buy it. They mm-hmm. will buy everything that's freaking up there. All you have to do is tell them. That's like, oh, yeah, that's Jupiter. It's moon. They don't know what they're looking at. They don't understand the technology. They don't understand the engineering. They, they're just, wow, that's just amazing. They, you know, they, they would absolutely buy it. So the question is, you know, when you walk out of that building, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger building built by someone bigger than us? Mm-hmm. And that's something that's been talked about in sci-fi forever since there's been sci-fi. Which is, you know, is it possible that we're, uh, you know, when we look at a snow globe, <laughs> that we're also in a snow globe, you know, <laughs> which is, you know, the, 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 the Russian stacking doll argument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then along with that, so in order to like perpetuate this story and keep it going, there, there would have to be a lot of people involved, right? Um, from, from scientists to global <laughs> leaders, astronauts, airline pilots. And then in your, in your hiding God clue video, um, you mentioned that it would only take one person to come forward, right? And then it would start to spiral and to, to one have that very person. Pa- particular person. Okay. Um, so let, let me the, the first part, which is does it take, is everybody in on it? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need very few people. Now, you need people to keep it going, but you don't have to tell them the truth. I mean, it's, it's something in the military called compartmentalization, which is you only you know, need to know was the military term, which is, you know, the spy, for example, the spy, he sent out there, you're going to assassinate that guy in that hotel from this rooftop, right? That's all you're going to tell the guy. It's like, he's mm-hmm. going to be here this particular time. He's going to get in this car. You have to shoot him between the door and the car. Everybody knows this. You do not tell him anything about the political intrigue behind it. You don't tell why he's the guy's dying. You don't tell, you know, the backstory of any, any capacity. Why would you? In fact, it would probably hurt the case. You know, it, it, or, or your your thing, what you're trying to do there. Um, I use Capricorn One as a reference a lot. The the 1970s movie uh, about the fake Mars mission, which was nobody in NASA knew except for the very very top brass and the telemetry guys. Those are the important guys. Um, meaning the telemetry guys are the guys that crunch the numbers and tell you where the rocket is when you don't see it anymore. Mm-hmm. So you know the rocket goes. It's like I can't see it anymore telemetry guy where's it at and he says well it's over the south indian ocean right now it's like you have to take his word for it because he's mm-hmm. the guy you know he's the one that say oh and you know it's it's at this elevation they're the ones that that have to do it and in capricorn one there was a telemetry guy who wasn't supposed to know anything about it and some and he was running he ran his own programs and said yes, it doesn't make any sense it's like the, he was the transmission couldn't be coming from 70 miles away and the second they even he even said that out loud, that was gone. He was removed from the movie and life. <laughs> it was like he was he was done. They don't take chances. Mm. So in this case, you don't tell need to know. It, this is the the greatest need to know thing ever. The pilots don't need to know. The um, the engineers that build the fuel systems. Look, you want them to build rockets. Neil Tyson doesn't need to know. Scientists don't need to know. Why would you? You want them acting naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, they they learned after the Apollo astronauts if you ever get a chance watch some of the apollo astronauts after apollo 11 when they especially the international press conference when they were being interviewed I mean, they they should have been on freaking cloud nine right they should have been on a permanent high and these guys the international press is talking to them and they're just so down and sad and they they, they they're just kind of mumbling through their answers like what the hell's wrong with you guys well mm-hmm. it's because all of a sudden they realize the the seriousness of this which mm-hmm. was they were taking credit for the greatest achievement in human history. And they were told, somebody briefed them. It's like, okay, here's why. Right? Nowadays, because everyone that's up there is military. Nowadays, it's, it's just a soldier thing. It's like, okay, we're going to tell you. You're going to be faking this. We're not going to tell you which one we're using it for. It's like shooting a, a scene in a movie, right, for somebody. And, and you tell the actors, okay, you're going to shoot this scene. 
And it's like, we're not going to tell you what film it's going to be in. We're not going to tell you what country it's going to show in. We're not going to tell you anything. It's just, look, here's your money. You sign the waiver, go away. And it's worked so far, which is why the ISS stuff is, is gone. You know, you tell the ast- even the astronauts as little as possible. The guys that know, hell, even the telemetry guys probably don't know enough to, to do a press release on top. So, and even if, uh, to your point, if you had guys who were going to break ranks and, you know, tell, tell people line from Three Days of the Condor, another movie, who are they going to go to exactly? Let's say you're an astronaut, right? Say you know a few things and you decide you're going to have a crisis of conscience. By the way, you've already been psychological profiled and they're monitoring your emails and your phone calls, which you would do. You're not going to let anything to chance. So if you're even thinking about, you know, if you email somebody, it's like, yeah, I'm feeling really guilty about blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're going to slowly but surely turn you in the right direction. But let's say you broke out. It's like one night you had a Jerry Maguire moment. It's like, yeah, I'm going to start that. Who would you go to? Exactly. Right. We got to call yeah. up. I mean, in Canada, so say you, you're gonna you're gonna go to the, the CBC. You're gonna go. Who who exactly are you going to tell that you know for a fact isn't compromised? Because all the media is compromised at some level. You know, we, they, we I can tell you right now, the American intelligence agencies have people in everywhere. They have everywhere just to make sure stories don't you know go off off kilter. And you got one shot at this. Because you come out to the wrong producer, because it's like, yeah, that sounds like a great story. We're thinking to run it. Let me run it past some of my other producers. And then it's over. Because some of those right. producers, they're they monitoring traffic. They're monitoring this. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock on your door. And uh, you crash into a telephone pole, apparently. <laughs> That's it for you. Yesterday. So at, at the top of it, is it... Um... So if there's like, there's obviously, it's a, it would be a web going down of who yep. knows, who doesn't know. Um, Who's the top? Who knows what? Who, yeah, who is the top? Well, is it government? The, is that's, it well, that that's, the million dollar No, 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 no. The governments rise and fall. There's a, there's a wonderful, if you ever get a chance, look up stuff called the rules of power. The number one, one rule of power has never changed in the history of our civilization, which is stay hidden. Uh, or the, the longer version of it is never put yourself in a position to be overthrown, mm-hmm. which means, so could, yeah, people are going to argue all day. It's like, who's the, t- in fact, you could go to conspiracy people or anybody. It's like, what's the top group? Is it the Bilderbergs? Is it the Rothschilds? Is it the Trilateral Commission? Is it the CFR? Is it the Vatican? Is this some Jewish cabal? Is it mm-hmm. the Illuminati? A lot of the times it's the same things in each conspiracy of who's at the top, right? You hear right. Rothschild, you hear um, the I, Vatican. Yeah, exactly. The Rothschild. Yeah, but the Rothschilds are fairly new compared to like the Vatican. The Vatican is the remnants of, of the Roman Empire, where and that, that goes back as far as we, you know, that, that goes back our entire history line. Whereas the Rothschilds, that only goes, their power structure really only took place. Um, and yes, they accumulated a ridiculous amount of money. Um, but that was because of the, um, the if you know the story behind them, the the Waterloo, the, the, the fall of Napoleon, which was, the, it, real quick, the, the Rothschilds made their money because they had their scouts, you know, the, the Battle of Waterloo, where British, British and, and the French fighting, 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 fighting. And then finally, Napoleon, it's this final battle at Waterloo, where if Napoleon wins, the, 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 the British Empire is in trouble. And the same with the other, you know, they, they, they have leverage against each other. And it, the story goes, and it's absolutely feasible, is that the scouts from the battle, because this wasn't, you can't make phone calls back then, you know, it's just horses with, with riders. They sent their fastest riders back from, they knew, it's like, oh yeah, Napoleon is going to lose. They go, head back to Britain and they say, Napoleon won. The stock market crashes in Britain absolutely just thumps and everyone's selling as fast as they freaking can and what do you and the rothschilds is like just cherry picked and bought Mm -hmm. all these stocks at rock bottom prices and then the real scout show up it's like no no we won and the stocks rocket back back up up. and it it is the definition of cornering the market Mm -hmm. uh, from the movie trading places which nobody understood the ending because they didn't explain how cornering the market works um Anyway, so the Rothschilds are fairly new by, by, by comparison. Yes, they have a lot of money. Can they influence things? Yes, but they haven't been around as long. I mean, what were they doing? What, things were happening before the Rothschilds. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Are they a powerful group? Yeah, you bet they are. I mean, if you have 
12 digit bank accounts, you know, you can do anything you want. What I like to do is define it between the puppet masters and the puppets. Here's, here's the problem with the cur the blessing and the curse of being, you can't be both. Meaning you can't be a high, I, when people say, oh, it's the richest man in the room. Well, you know, Jeff Bezos and, and Bill Gates. It's like, no, no, no. Those are the richest public people in the world. Mm -hmm. The really, really, really rich people, they don't advertise it. They just say, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, Bill Gates, whatever. He can do whatever he wants. Jeff Bezos, he's only, in fact, Jeff Bezos hasn't even had his money 20 years. There are families that have had money and power going back centuries. Generationals. Oh, yeah, wow. generation of, I mean, huge family lines. So, but you can't be both. You can't, the, you can't be the puppet master and the puppet. The puppet is in the spotlight. The puppet gets all the glory, right? They're out there on stage doing their thing. They are in the light. The puppet masters cannot. They cannot risk it because once you were in the light, the population, the general public knows who you are. And if all of a sudden they turn on you, they're going to come after you. They mm -hmm. can't, you can't be attacked if they don't know who you are. It is the brilliance of being the puppet master. So it's this weird curse. They'd love to be public in some cases. So that's why they, you know, you buy politicians, you buy kings, you buy barons, you control those guys. Uh, but at the very tippy top, no, you don't know who they are, which is why like the, the X-Files, wonderful. The, the premise was the X-Files, those top, the men in the room and the, the, the big smoking men room, you didn't know who the names were. Why mm -hmm. would you? You just knew they were older, established families, people that have been around a long time that keep things going. There you okay. go. Um, so we're wrapping it up a little bit. Uh, my last two points, not so much on, uh, evidence or anything like that. I just wanted to know, like, do you think the, um, well, we'll start with this one. Um, yeah. it's kind of a rapidly growing movement, right? People are joining every day. Like the flat yeah. earth is probably the fastest growing conspiracy that there is right now. To, so um, much so they shut us, shut the um, the scoreboard down. They shut down our search results in, um, in YouTube. Right, yeah, because I tried to look that up in uh, one of your videos. It, it, you showed the growth, yeah. and I looked up the growth, and it's not there anymore. Not, um, and people say, well, that, 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 they didn't do it because of you. It's like, uh, yeah, they did. <laughs> um, so in your, in your Richard Bird video, you talk about um, his expeditions and how um, at certain point they were cut off. There was no more expeditions. Yeah. They found something. Um, so what would you say is the next move for the flat earth movement? Like what's, what's the goal? What's happening? Um, the only thing realistically, uh, come on, the Antarctic treaty is no joke. It's been around mm -hmm. for 50, 60 years and, and, uh, it's bulletproof. We're, we're not a trip to the edge is not a, a feasible option. No, no, it's not even an option. I mean, you have, if you have six decades to set up a defense system to keep people from going, yeah, yeah, you know, you're not going to breach that. It's just not going to happen. I mean, there's been producers, you know, producers jump in. And it's like, oh, it's, we should totally do a show and the finale should be Antarctica. It's like, yeah, good luck. You're not going to mm -hmm. get past it. Um, if, if you, you read through the Antarctic Treaty. It's amazing how, how, um, how robust it is. Uh, again, you, you see it, the, the brilliance of it is that nobody was, owns Antarctica. So you can't, mm -hmm. you don't just go to one country and ask permission. You have to go to a dozen countries and the permit process is horribly expensive. And even then, that's the point. You alert, you're alerting just going, you know, setting up this process. Yeah, you're showing you're alerting interest. so many different agencies. They know where you are. So even if you did find, you know, let's say you're a billionaire and you got some triple seven fully loaded and you got to go off course, right? Bypass GPS. Let's, let's go for it. Let's say you saw, you know, the outer marker. Again, what are you going to do when you try coming back? Mm -hmm. If the defense department doesn't take care of you in advance, they're going to talk to you and say, yeah, you can't talk about this. If you do, we're going to seize everything you got. You know, we'll, we'll discredit you. That, and that's the nice version. That's the kind version. The other mm -hmm. stuff, you know, what's the saying? We'll, we'll lock you in a room and throw away the room. You know, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to do that. Um, no, the, the only thing I hope for with people is the 100th monkey effect, which is very, very real. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, it is the, the update. You know, I believe that we, you know, at the core, God is a programmer, whoever built us, and this is still software, you know, this virtual. And we have seen the hundredth monkey effect in, in so many different things, but the animal species is fascinating. Um, the, the monkey thing was that after World War II, they were studying these uh, monkeys in, in Japan, and the scientists were giving them potatoes. And, you know, dropping them in by the beach and, you know, because these are these islands 
and the monkeys were slowly but surely learning that if you wash the potato, the sand off the potato in the water, it, they were a little easier to eat. You know, no one likes eating sand. The weird thing was, is when the hundredth monkey roughly learned, I don't know why it was like some round number, learned how to do this, all the monkeys learned it simultaneously, including the monkeys on the other islands that weren't even connected to these monkeys. That's where oh, really? it got weird. It was like this weird okay. update to where it's like it was beneficial to the monkeys and it's like oh yeah up you know somebody keyed in it's like when this threshold is reached i used to code uh update all monkeys <laughs> and it's like you know in the in this particular species and that's what mm -hmm. happens so can i think it uh will i think it, it happens to human beings that's what i'm hoping that when we reach this threshold whether they're public or not when more people realize that the truth of where we are you know versus the other people not to use an oversimplified term that's cooler to know about flat earth than it's not, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden everybody knows. And right. then everyone's kind of on the same page, but at least the dialogue moved forward. But we'll see how that goes. You know, with the world is what's happening right now. I'm not betting on anything. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, so you're, you're kind of betting on unity and that everyone, uh, the yeah. bigger the movement gets, the more people come together and eventually yeah. truth will be revealed. Yeah, because ninety percent of our community is still in the closet. Exactly, uh, they are. I've I've seen it so many times. People will not. I, know, I got family members that won't come out because mm -hmm. they uh, they're afraid of friends and family and coworkers. The peer pressure is an amazingly powerful thing. Um, I you know look at the Ash experiment, A S C H, which is basically just peer pressure. Uh, you, where you can convince people if you have enough people in a room and you bring in an outsider, that outsider will conform to that group within sometimes in seconds mm -hmm. how fast because which is you know why the mask thing was so effective when it, we hit here in the states when we hit 70 percent people wearing masks we went from 70 to 100 in a day because at that point everyone's like yeah as much as people want to be individuals most people out there just want to fit in mm -hmm. they don't they want, want to stick out they don't want to get hassled and you don't want to be the outsider and so that's what i'm hoping we can kind of flip the tables we'll see we're up against a you know i think we're on the yeah. clock <laughs> it's a clock big fight you got yeah it's a lot of work to do um yeah. yeah one of the final things i just wanted to do you think uh because obviously the topic of flat earth is majority people it's almost anger right when you talk about it um or like disgust and it depends who you, you talk the, to and how much education right, it does have. it does um yeah. do you think the criticism that it that flat earth gets is fair and like why are people so critical of this particular conspiracy i do think it's fair i have said on multiple occasions that if you don't laugh at flat earth in the first 20 minutes uh there's probably something wrong with you mm -hmm. because it, it is the conditioning uh that's that's why the reactions are so strong the knee-jerk reactions that we get are straight out of the five stages of acceptance um denial anger bargaining depression and finally acceptance which is you put a globe in a classroom a stupid toy globe and you point at it and you say that's where we live uh and you reinforce that for 12 years that it, that is cia basic conditioning you know you just it just reinforces and reinforces and reinforces to where they go out of school they have an emotional attachment they, they are invested in that no different and i don't know what they do up in canadia um, it's not a real place, I know. The uh, which is um, the American flag is in the corner of every classroom, every school, right? Right. And well, that's just American flag. You don't even have to really talk about it. You pledge allegiance in some places, some places you don't. Um, but at the end of those twelve years, that flag is reinforced so much they're willing to fight for your country. There are people that join the military partially because they've seen that flag for so many years. What's mm -hmm. the difference between that and the globe? Almost nothing. And it's like, oh yeah, flags where you live, that globe's where you live. You know, the connection is always there. And mm. people, the adverse reaction, it's, it's knee-jerk reaction. Um, even me, uh, I, I was, you know, one of the classic examples. When I clicked on my first Flat Earth video, I was visibly flushed. I mean, I got embarrassed to click on it. And that mm -hmm. bothered me because I was alone in a room with the drapes pulled right i've been on the internet for a number of years i've seen some weird stuff on the internet right never you know i've never been embarrassed by anything it's like <laughs> it's like yeah that's really not my category or thing <laughs> but mm -hmm. i would never embarrass me it's like oh that's weird 
Uh, but this one I was, it was like, why? And I caught myself. It's like, why am I physically um, getting embarrassed by clicking on a flat earth video? And it took me a while. It's like, oh, right. Because we all know it's a globe. We're just reinforced this over and over and over again mm -hmm. for so long. It is the only thing we debunk to children. Right? You know, we don't teach children about JFK or the moon landing or Pearl right. Harbor. It's the only, there. it will, this would be the only conspiracy theory that would be perpetuated from your entire life, right? From yeah. the start, yeah. I start mean, of your education, this is. Yeah, you don't tell a kid in first enforced. grade about JFK, but you mm -hmm. absolutely do introduce. It's like, oh yeah, we thought it was flat. Now it's a globe. Here we go with our basic edition of arithmetic, right? right? That's, and that that's it would make it probably the biggest conspiracy theory on the planet because it's something that involves the entire yeah. planet and the entire education system of yeah, every... which is why the um, the conspiracy world was really against this when we first started mm -hmm. coming out because I mean there were conspiracy people that said no 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 these are the top conspiracies right yours is ridiculous and makes us look bad and I go no actually. Ours is the umbrella that all you guys are underneath. Right. Because each not conspiracy happens in different countries, different aspects of the world. But this is one that this is the, the whole enchilada. World. You know, not right, I don't right. want to, you know, I don't want to put a dark spin on things, but it's like, you know, when people say, oh, 9-11 is the biggest go, no offense. That's just a couple buildings in America. <laughs> yeah, it's this one is country. the whole world. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what conspiracy you're talking. You want to talk about a lone gunman here or some yeah. sort of four-man conspiracy? I go. This, this is, this thing's, you know, physically the biggest. Now the, the benefit of that though, is when you get into it, you automatically are open-minded to every other conspiracy afterwards. You, I have mm -hmm. seen people that weren't conspiracy people that once they get into flat earth, it's not even a gateway drug. It's the drug. Mm -hmm. you know, once Did you, get you into find it, yourself diving into other things after this or? Oh yeah. Yeah. I re I had to revisit everything that I ever questioned at that point because mm -hmm. everything was feasible because if you, if you can believe this, then what is off the table? I, I joked, I was like, well, uh, the first thing would be you know, the hypocrisy of it where, you know, I had friends that absolutely believed that some of the Royal family were lizards, right? Lizard people. <laughs> and I would tell them, I would tell, you know, I'm going, wow, that's pretty, pretty interesting. I go, what about flat earth? They go, get the hell out of here. And I was going, what are you talking about? I go, it's funny people? where people find their limits, right? Like yeah, yeah. Certain things now, are... uh, now I have to revisit lizard people or, you know, some people, you know, a person would, you could come up to me, you know, six years ago and say, I'm pretty sure that Bigfoot and Elvis had a baby, right? Maybe like, uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, now I'm like, yeah, you know what? I got a couple minutes. What yeah, do you it's got? It's worth looking at, right? Yeah. What, what do you What do you throw it at? How can I? It, it would be utter hypocrisy for me to discount anything. I start mm -hmm. my day, and people, it's funny. They they say, I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to think it's crazy. I go, yeah. I start my day with flat Earth. I don't think you're going to be able to top <laughs> that. So throw it at me, and which mm -hmm. is fine. Again, it's it helps the conspiracy world at the same time it's the bane of the conspiracy world it's right. this weird paradox so yeah because I, I after taking this i, I definitely found myself because it's not that i would um not believe anything but it's kind of things something that you just pass off right oh well maybe mm, yeah yeah where's the evidence but like the more you look into it and more give it the benefit of the doubt and question things right and it, it makes it a lot more interesting and it does give you something to, well to let, think let me about. let me let me throw a logic thing at you to end this, which is because it really does make sense, which is let's say you did find out you were living in a building, right? Mm -hmm. We'll go that sci-fi route. You're, li you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. You didn't figure it out. You didn't, even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. Would you tell the people? I asked this to, I've asked this to journalists for years. So would you tell people now as a journalist, you like, you like, well, the people have a right to know. And it's like, you're, it's like, I oh, wait, we ought to go out and tell people. But the longer you think about it, you're like, right. Cause public panic is a, is a yeah, maybe major not. factor. I mean, I, I, and I'm the first look, I'm, I'm, I'm an anti all sorts of things. And I will be the first person to tell you, it's like, yeah, if you know anything about Roswell, Roswell did not go over well with the general public. They were freaking panicking right off the mm. bat. And that was in the 40s. I go, would you really want to tell people in 1960 that, oh, yeah, by the way, the world's a freaking snow globe. 
th there'd be people that would lose it. I mean, there's this weird potential. People in power don't take chances like that. And so mm. even though you'd want to, I, I am the first, first person to say that, no, I wouldn't tell them back then. I would not, I have the same attitude. I think exactly like they do. You know, I could sit in on Illuminati meetings and not be outraged at all. Because of, because you'd say you know what what could what could possibly go wrong? You list off all these things. It's like okay, we're not telling anyone anything until we figure out a way to introduce it to the public that one benefits us and keeps the whole thing from just imploding. Right. And here we are. I mean, I I don't think by the way it's an accident. I don't think you're talking to me and and uh, you know we've done so much in the last six years is any sort of accident. The infrastructure is in place now. High-speed internet, social media, six billion smartphones. Uh, you can push the same narrative to everyone almost instantaneously at a speed that was unimaginable even 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that's where, you know, the question is why. You know, I think there's something else coming, something bigger than, than Flat Earth. And there's only a couple things bigger than Flat Earth. I mean, Flat Earth is a, a precursor to something else. Flat Earth opens the mind for something else, whether it's introducing an older civilization uh, or the meaning of life. Right, because after you figure out Flat Earth, you have to figure out what encompassed Flat Earth, what exactly. goes beyond yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat Earth, what's outside the dome, all these higher power things that yep. come along with exposing this one thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So you got it. Yeah, uh, I, that was all my questions. Um, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. I, I really appreciate it. Um, oh, happy to do it for for Western on Western in on Ontario. Western, yeah, sure. University yeah, of Western me, Ontario. Really, let me look this up really fast. One second.